too late to have real accountability for that, to have real accountability for that by George Bush, probably. I don't foresee any of the current candidates prosecuting him as they have every right to do uh, once he gets out of office. And he would do well to stay out of the vicinity of the Hague, actually, but in this country, pretty safe. However, if it's a question of getting back, getting back to a country where the person is bound by the law and knows it, he's not the first to remember to feel that way. The president who indicted and prosecuted me, Richard Nixon, said after he was out of office that he had done crimes against me, which included, by the way, this is what part of his impeachment hearings, included warrantless wiretaps by the FBI of his home national security aides on which I was overheard, and, uh, uh, and journalists, included bringing people up to, quote, incapacitate Daniel Ellsberg on the steps of the Capitol on May 3rd, 1972, included a burglary into my former psychoanalyst's office to get information to blackmail me with, to keep me silent about his nuclear threats. Having done all that, when he was confronted with that, the burglary specifically by David Frost in interviews later for which he was paid a million dollars, by the way, he then gave us his real gut reaction to that, why he felt not guilty. When the president does it, it's not illegal. And he said that later. Now, he learned different from a Watergate committee of a kind we has not been set up under Pelosi. He was learned different from impeachment proceedings that brought him to resignation and which did make the war endable. The crimes against me in particular turned out to have been a vulnerability of his that actually brought him out of office and made the war endable uh, a year later. Now, so, so one person, one person can scare these people with the truth. And as a matter of fact, uh, I was just asked by an interviewer today, uh, I didn't know about it otherwise, Scott McClellan, the former public information officer, has a memoir out today which reveals that uh, he knew at the time that what he was revealing, what he was conveying to the public were lies, that we were being lied into a war without any legal or rational basis to it, whatever, to a catastrophe. Now, I'm glad to hear that from an insider now. I'll buy his book. I'm glad he's selling us that information now, some years later. But I would also like to see people inside reflect, and journalists reflect, and you reflect, on how many lives Scott McClellan could have saved if he told us that earlier. At the time of the war. Now, if he'd done that, if he'd done that, he would not be on a book tour now. Uh, he might, he would not be getting royalties and he probably, he might very well be prosecuted. But he took that oath. That oath to defend and support the Constitution, which he knew was being violated by his bosses, in which he was violating. It wasn't enough for him to say, no boss, I don't believe that, or I don't want to be caught lying, I don't want to say that, or I, I resign. None of that is enough. That, this applies to Admiral Fallon, too, for example, who just resigned. Huh? It was his duty to use his position to tell the truth at whatever cost to himself that might have meant, and to save lives. <laughs>